All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Welcome, welcome, guys. Welcome, Isham. Welcome, Steve. Welcome, Feed Trust. So, going live right now on YouTube very soon. I have an interesting day coming up. Everyone heard about the news, possible war stuff. That's always nice for uh, for the markets. I only focus on technicals. So yes, of course, I I'm anticipating something to happen. But um, with war, uh, you should always remember war talk is a lower DXY. So my bias for today is, uh, like I mentioned, the daily uh, daily outlook, one I shared in the school group, in the DT analysis section, is I see lower DXY, that means higher USD D pairs. And for example, for indices, it's going to be uh, very interesting. I'm going to look at that in a few seconds. And what we're going to do in a few minutes from now, it's now 9 a.m. And what we're going to do is uh, look at the indices at the New York Open at 9.30. And we're going to potentially take a quick scalp, just like with yesterday. Yesterday we had a win. And let's see how uh, how today will, will play out. Trading on the, the indices, the futures, I'm trading on the indices account, or the future account from Apex Trader. I'll explain more about that soon. There are some guys who want to hear the system. I'm going to use like a strategy for a firm like Apex or Elite Trader Funding or Top Step, like the futures firm with their trading drawdowns. So more on that later. Also, we'll pin, pin the chat. You can ask your questions here. And yeah, let's make it a nice session. So let's take a look at the DXY. So for this week, we have a consolidation. We traded to the volume balance as expected on Tuesday, high of the week. Then on Thursday, we set a potential low of the week, at the daily busy. So we have a external to internal play, just like on the weekly outlook discussed. It was very obvious. For next week, I'm going to expect to move towards the highs right here to complete the daily market maker buy model you see here. So I think still higher DXYs on the cards, but um, for today, you can look at it yourself, it's quite bearish. So perhaps we're going to take out a Thursday low. And that's for DXY. Some new guys joined as well. Uh, Jan Mika, welcome. Mohammed, welcome back. Let's see what the indices have done. Like we had a strange run. This, of course, the news. Like this is in the end of uh, of, the, of the evening, post post New York PM. We had this huge movement down. And why was this? Because of the news about the potential war, about like uh, Israel attacking, I think Israel attacking Iran and some other geopolitical news. Uh, so that's nice. So for now, if you're going to scalp, I like to scalp from the one hour and then down. Perhaps you can go to four hour. You know what? Like we already took the lows here. So what we did, we traded to this daily busy. together with the order block. So like, this is not random, guys. Indices are printing very detailed. So there was an order block. Top the order block, bottom of the daily busy. That's where we trade into. So I think this low will hold for now. Uh, 
uh, I say for now is we can run it today. Um, on the four hour, we have a few arrays. We're currently trading into a four hour SIBI. And on the one hour, what catches my eye is this one, the SIBI. And it's supported by an order book. And what I also see is this one hour, BC. So potential for a scalp around the open in a few minutes. We can look at a internal to external range play. So perhaps we can catch something like, depends on how the market opens, of course, and how price reacts inside this. Something like this. It'll be very nice. And why I think that is we trade it to a higher time frame array, a daily BC and order block together. That's a higher probability for now. Then we trade upwards, displacing, respecting this one hour BC. And the buy program you want to you want to have all your discount rates respected until the target. So let's see what price does inside this one hour CB. Fifteen minutes, not so much. You see, already trading to this five, 15 minutes for value gap. Yeah, so I think I'm going to stay with this analysis for now. Like we have, if you think about the market maker buy model in the five minute. This could be your risk consolidation. And this is not your standard high. It's not your standard buy, uh, mark maker buy model. And why? It's because this was done. This low was set outside the kill zone. So that's where you need to be focused on. But for now, I think like low hanging fruit, we'll be catching this uh, this move. So let's see what we get around the open. Yeah, so what the rule of thumb is, like when a low is set outside a kill zone, I am less trusting of, of it. So this low could be rent today. Maybe New York, maybe PM, but it's outside the kill zone. This one is inside the kill zone, it's yesterday. Into the order block, respect it. So around the open, we're going to get try if we can catch an A and D in some sort of way. And let's see if we can catch an SMT with ES together with that. Welcome, Michael. Welcome, Steve. Welcome, Zachariah. Good you guys are here. Feel free to ask questions in the chat as well. All right, let's go over some pairs. Uh, DXY, I think it's going lower. You're currently inside a four hour PC. And that means higher prices potential for the UT pairs. Let's see what are the areas. Exactly here with it. External range play to internal range. We already had that now we're consolidating a little bit. GU consolidating. GU is very nice for uh, for next week. And why is that? We have a low right here, external range. And we have a city waiting right here. So we can have one of the two moves from external to internal. 
and from internal to external. So that's for next week. I want to discuss the daily outlook as well. So okay, now okay, this you don't want to trade, right? This is the consolidation since Monday. So if you took trades on GU and you lost, that's okay. You cannot anticipate this. There will be a dedicated video in the mentorship later about how to anticipate consolidations and how to trade them. But for now, like if you see this after the fact, yeah, don't don't sweat it. It's okay. I didn't execute on any USD pair uh, this far. What I did today was I shorted the USD cat. And to share you why I did that is the start of the daily. We took out this daily high with a few pips, a little bit, and then this plays downwards. And then this looked to me as a market maker buy model. Spark my reversal, then displacement downwards at the one hour, leaving a for value gap. At the value gap also displaced away. And in a cell program, we want to have all these arrays respected. So this is value gap, this is value gap. And at the London here, I took the, uh, the, the short entry. I'm trading this on an FTMO account. And the thing about an FTMO is you cannot hold trades overnight or over the weekend, I mean. So probably I'm going to close this uh, in this session already, just to uh, state the rules. So this is one of the setups I took today. Let's see how this plays out. We need to lower the XY and a higher CAT for this. Let's look at CAT. CAT's going sideways at the moment, and the XY is still in that four hour busy, chilling. Let's see around the open what we get in uh, 17 minutes. So any other pairs you guys would like to have discussed? Currently trading in 2D. One hour city, or busy, I mean. Just put them in the chat. If you want a pair or you're looking at a pair to close the week, just let me know. I'm looking at uh, Sakari. I'm looking at the weekly value gap on GU potential buys. Let's go to GU. So you mean here? Yes, yeah, weekly is very nice. Yeah. So for next week, remove this. So for next week, this is a very clear target, right? So yeah, uh, higher price for GU matches with the lower DXY. So it could be very nice. And what you see right here is also kind of promising. Like we took out, you know, the 2022 mentorship. I see took liquidity, this place down. Respecting the for value gap here, we had an order block right here. Bodies are respecting that. So yeah, higher GU looks very clean looking at this with like this as low hanging fruit right here. I'm against Friday, so it could be next week. So it could be just going to chill, perhaps take this low out first. Uh, but this, this looks very clean for now. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm with you there, uh, Zachariah. Um, USD, VR ask, use the cat, does shorting above today low and high make sense? 
USD cat. Above the long high, you mean shorting above this high? Yeah, sure. If your bias is still complete, we could have like you call it the you can call it the turtle soup or a purge. You can see this, and then I'm less happy because then my setup is not valid anymore. Uh, I won't do it because I'm already in, uh, and we are at a Friday, so um, I will wait for that move for uh, for Monday, if you're. Uh, Steve asks, how do you approach the market for you to focus on your point of interest? What's the strategy you're using? I'm going to the daily, weekly, and monthly. And what, what I'm going to explain right now, it's exactly what I do every Sunday in the weekly Outlook videos. I'm going to the, for example, uh, taking a random pair, uh, the EuroGPY. I'm going to the monthly and I say, okay, what do I see? Do I see for value gaps? Do I see all highs and lows? Yes, I see a high that could be drawn liquidity. We are still in this monthly city, but it looks like we're not going to respect that. Then we're going to the weekly. And on weekly, we traded off a weekly for value gap from internal range liquidity to external range liquidity. So if you have watched the video that I released today on YouTube, uh, Daily Bias Part 3, this is exactly the play you should do. And I took the long setup um, this week, and I got stopped out by this week. No, it was on Monday. There was one big week. I think it was this one. I got taken out. It was a week. So I'm, I'm not in this move. And I think everyone got, got taken out uh, <laughs> today. Like, uh, look at this. this is, I think lots of people didn't see this coming. And if you did, uh, well done, well done. So, um, uh, Steve, to give a short answer to your question, go look at old highs and lows and imbalances on the daily, weekly, and monthly and mark those out in time. And when price trades towards those areas, then go to your lower time frame and see if you can find an entry setup like the 2020 to IC mentorship or the school setup or whatever setup you you like to use. Hey, Daniel Acosta, welcome, welcome. Uh, USD ZAR, I'm trading that. Um, I took GCAT buys this long because of the lows and I check it out when we got to displacement down. All right, um, the word chickened out, uh, Kirian. Um, I would say for, for next week, focus on if you execute, stay in the trade. Even if you take the loss, taking a loss, okay, you, you that's part of the trade. So uh, if you took a buy on GU, yesterday I got a loss on GU, as you can see. I was trading this one, but I was too too eager there. So I'm going to remove this for, for clarity. And yes, now maybe you're kind of upset because you missed it. And that's fine. So remember that. I think it's a very clean setup. In London, we took out yesterday's low. Then we displaced upward. We are bodies are respecting for value gap. And also, this is an order block. And why is this an order block? Because it takes out liquidity. I probably hit the order block. So uh, yeah, you should have been in the trade. And uh, don't be upset that you're now missing the move. Or FOMO to the move because next week, new week, and trust your analysis. And there's a difference between doing your analysis correctly and taking wins. There's a huge difference because you can do your analysis correctly and the market can still trade your stop loss. That's part of your edge. You, you, you need to take losses. So uh, maybe journal that, uh, Kirian. It's very important. All right, we are nine minutes out for the open. Let's see how. Yeah, GCAT. Oh, use the cat. I mean, I'm not too pleased with this, with this um, movement. I wanted to have a more clean reaction. We still have yesterday's low, and also we have Monday low to be ran. 
Uh, but just like I said to Kirian, um, when you take a trade, don't be chicken. And like for now, I did my analysis. I'm expecting the uh, the market maker sell model here. Right here, this is what I like to trade. And if price just rockets to my uh, stop loss in a few seconds, I'm not going to do the break even. No, I'm just going to take the loss. Does that loss hurt? Of course, losing is not nice, but you cannot be emotional about this. You take you take the trade and you don't touch it. Try that for once. Just don't touch it. Um, Destiny, welcome, welcome back, welcome back, Destiny. What's your bias on NQ? Yeah, we're going to look at NQ right now. Also on ES, we're going to, of course, like we always do. Um, I haven't analyzed ES yet at the start of the stream. Let's remove all this. At the start of the stream, I analyzed NQ already. So let, let's start with NQ. NQ on the daily, we trade into this daily busy and the order block very precise but it was outside the kill zone it was because of the the news about the uh potential war currently we are inside this one hour cb i think on the four hour also yeah we're still inside this huge cb i'm kind of flat for now i would say we're going short term higher to complete like this market maker buy model um, so I'm not sure. I want to just see how the, what the open does. So re remember what we do. So we look at potential consolidation and then manipulation. And then we have uh, distribution and we are going to catch the distribution lag. So based on this, just looking at this at the one hour, I would say we made the low of the week. Because this higher, like this is very precise delivery. Yes, I tried to kill some, but for now, and then respect a PD array, this kind of array hourly. And now if you trade to the hourly, my money now, but I want to see what price does. I'm not going to enter anything. And if I enter, you're going to see it. I would look at something like this. So at the, if you look at the one minute, this look like a market maker sell model. So that's why I'm kind of flat. So I want to see energy. So if we get, for example, pick out this low, big candles up, just like we did yesterday, then I'm going to anticipate a potential setup. And I'm willing to short as well. So I'm kind of flexible. That's, that's the cool thing about uh, copy. Be flexible. What's your bias on thank you, Destiny? I wait to see if price can trade to the premium for value gap. And with the premium for value gap, I think you mean. So you mean like, like an OTE short, something like this. You mean this premium for value gap? Or you mean the second one, this one, or are we in right now? Excuse me for the, uh, the charts, a little, a little bumpy. The first, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th that that will be my take profit for the scalp if we're going to take it. So now we trade to the one hour for value cap. If we see energy, and that means like, for example, just like you can rewatch the stream from yesterday. So displacement up, leaving a for value cap. 
and again up, again up. And I want to see the first value gap get respected. If that happened and we're going to trade up, leaving another value gap, that's the one I want to take. So yes, you are removing some RR from your trade, but I don't care. I just don't want to be fake. Be, we, we're trading one minute. So um, this is something uh, I would target. And if it doesn't happen, if it just goes down, that's fine. Because you can frame shorts from this as well. Like for example, here, respect it down. But yeah, but because we are in a higher time frame array, do one hour. I'm looking at something like this. And guys, this is no signal. This is just learning. You learn the, you learn the concepts from IST himself on, him, on his YouTube. You can learn it inside the 2024 mentorship in the school group. You can learn it in the IST Bible. IST Bible are basically all his core content, core content uh, stuff with notes. So use that IST Bible while watching the core content yourself. The links to his videos are inside the uh, IST Bible, and also add your own notes. So use it as a as a scrapbook. Three minutes out. I, I'm, I think we're going to see some energy around the open because the, the market wasn't open yet with the news, with the warnings. Let's check UG cat. Yeah, UG cat is just chilling, just chilling. Like we were, like the bodies are respecting the fifty percent for value cat. You remember from the for value cat video from the mentorship? That's very nice. I like to see that. But let's see, let's see. Yeah, my bias is still uh, same, just like it. Okay, going to focus, guys. Focus. Let's check. A look at NQ for a second, or ES, I must say. Yes, we did the same. Is that the order block here? Could have an internal to ex for external to internal play here. So perhaps also bullish. Let's see what price did. This is less clean, I must say. But we but we have this same array, like a little one here, and big one here already got touched and and went. Do we have a premium array as low hanging fruit? Yes, we do. But we all like did we touch this? I think we touched this. Yeah, we did touch this. So yeah, short term short term longs for ES as well. So we could see, for example, at the uh, the open in one minute that we could have push up and then we can look for potential shorts or vice versa. So let's see what price does. I'm going to log into my TradeOvate account to so give me one second. Let's see, remove screen, sc screen sharing to log into the, uh, the trading panel. TradeOvate. This would be a shame if the opportunity presents itself and I'm not logged in. That would be, uh, would be ugly. Okay, I am logged in. Going back to the charts and we are back. And you see the open pushing higher. Pushing higher, pushing lower. <laughs> Let's see. And this is where some traders can get a little anxious. We're at the start of the session, so nothing is going on right now. We're just waiting. Perhaps consolidating. But wait for the first move. Wait for the first move. So you guys knew uh, from uh, today and forward, we're going to do the stream starting at 9 a.m. instead of 8.30. Uh, sometimes we will do it at 8.30 uh, when we have like big, big red folders, but um, you can just, in your agenda, your calendar, it's going to be at 9 a.m. Uh, because most of the setups we are taking here on the uh, the NQ scalps are going to be uh, around the open so it doesn't make sense to be live and just <laughs> just just talking uh, for hours straight just waiting for the setup I see teaches two concepts here one is the six sister concept. That's the one that where price 
one of the two is left behind and is coming later and want to see SMT. So sometimes they can I'm going to make a dedicated video about it as well. You should watch the 2023 mentorship if you want to know more about that. Okay, they're not moving in tandem. I think while creating this SMT, we're going higher. So now this means that's for value gap here. And we could let this be a inverse for value gap in a few seconds. Who knows if we're going up? If we're going up, this one becomes an inverse for value gap. Now it's still for value gap, but it's going to get disrespected with displacement up. Then we can use it as a trade upwards. Any questions so far? I'll just waiting and chilling together. Yes, it's going higher already. And there's a video coming up about balance price range as well. We don't have any right now. Marcel's asking uh, about the Apex tricks and tips. Yeah, we're going to talk about it in a second, uh, Arshad. Thank you for the reminder. I want to see what price does right now to potentially take an entry. And uh, after that, because I see ES going higher, and that's my bias as well. We did have an SMT because we didn't take out this high or this low. I mean, this was the 8.6. ES is raised way stronger. No for value gaps right here. Also, no inverse for value gaps. So I'm uh, I'm flat for now. And an SMT, I said it every day, an SMT only works as in confluence, not as an entry setup. So price can just tr trade straight through it and ignore it. It it needs to be used in combination with a vetted entry model. Um, Zakaria, the five minute breaker, is respecting. Yep, I think you mean this this one. Yeah, I think I think higher price is, is on the cars, but like this is accumulation.
All right, so we are trading a little lower. Let's remove this uh, for now. You know, uh, you guys know what I'm looking at. Okay, well, this looks uh, interesting. So what we potentially could see, are we already in the premium of the range? Yes, we are. So we have a for value gap, it's in premium of the range. And it looks like we are respecting that. That's why I said it was like one side. My money was on high. But looking at this price action, just dropped 70 pips. So uh, that indicates we're going lower. So let's see. See how this respects. And what can we target? Get target a lot, by the way. We can target this. Yeah, lots of sell side liquidity. Could take a trade something like this towards the low here. What is it? Oh well, <laughs> this was fast. It was fast. <laughs> no time, guys. No time today. NQ has no time to chill. All right, with some new guys in here as well. Welcome, guys. Nice that you are here. I see. Uh, German Ortiz, I see Africa Voice is new. Welcome, guys. Welcome. If any questions, let me know. I wanted to take this setup, but this was very, very, very fast. Okay, so if you look at the one hour right now, looks like we're going for the lows. Yeah, I had the short bias for like later in the session. I actually wanted to be the manipulation leg like, to be uh, to be to the uh, to the upside and then short, just like we discussed like before the open. Like, uh, where's our big friend? Like towards like short from here, that'd be very nice. But this is like two hundred points away, so we are already in premium. So let's see if it holds. We're leaving liquidity here, guys. That's very interesting. Like, you see this? We're leaving liquidity. Let's see if I can take a. Let's see. Taking it with speed. This is a little scalp, guys. A little late to the party. I think we're going to take a loss on this, and that's fine. 
we can try again later. All right, stop is almost there. Oh, it stopped very late, very late. Oh, that's, that's a shame. All right, took a loss. And we can try again later. It was a very early scalp. And what I'm going to do, and I think Harshad is still here. He asked, like, what's your game plan with Apex? Like, I think the loss I took right now is a little too big. I'm training the minis right now. And what I basically want to do is, where's the time? Like, I am trading a 50k Apex account. And drawdown, I think it's 2.5% trailing. So it goes up when your equity curve goes up. And you need to have 10 trading days. And minimum equity for withdrawal is, I think, 2,500 in profit. So if you need to trade at least 10 days, and it, 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 those are not days that you can do like a 0 0.01 lot size, you need to trade real. They have another, they call it the consistency rule. Um, so that means you, for the 10 trading days, you need basically $250 per uh, per trade. I, I think that's too too little. So what I'm doing is I'm approaching and, and I think that it went wrong because I was a little too hasty with, uh, with uh, the short. I want to risk 500 per trade. I want to shoot for 2R. So it's, it's 1,000 plus or 500 loss. And I want to do it two trades per day max. So I can max loss is 1,000 per day. And I think with the uh, short I just took, I already took like an 800 uh, loss. Uh, so I'm going to, for uh, for next week, I'm going uh, back to the, uh, this is the e mini, and I'm going to the micros because one mini is already a little too big for a 50K account. If you're trading 100K account, you can do this. But uh, this is what I am uh, aiming for. So don't be like me with my hasty, uh, with my fast shorts. You get burned, like you saw, and that's fine. Let me know, Harshad, is this what you, uh, what you're looking for? And what I'm going to do with the Apex, Apex accounts, uh, I'm going to buy not one, but I think like 10 or 20 of them. And then you can compound them. So you can take that 250 per day because it compounds like 250 times 20 accounts. You can do a copy trader. You can have 5K per trade. And that's more what I want to, to do. Kieran asks, do you trade your own personal funds too? Uh, not for now. I'm trading uh, props. But like, there are lots of prop firms that are going down right now. So uh, I'm going to transition to uh, private capital very soon. Like all the prop firms, like a, like this semi big one, all went down with STF and uh, True Forex funds and fund traders. So like everyone lost all their funding there. I lost some too. So now I'm just only doing FTMO and I do Apex and perhaps look into some other, but that's what I do for now. I took a loss early stream while we were little, little bullish, but it's, yeah, that's a shame. <laughs> that's a shame. So, okay, it was the manipulation lag. We left liquidity. So for now, I'm like with this mind, I'm flat until we are right here. 
Like with this, you see this reaction, and we left a equal low here. So this could be targeted in the AM session or in the PM session, but I think we can see a move like this. Looking at this. Yeah, so what I did right now is I changed my bias too fast based on just one minute order flow. Also for my journal. Is if your bias at first was wait for the long side to play out and then go short, I should actually wait for that. I was too, uh, too greedy here. Uh, Isham, I think True Forex funds is back. They were out for a few. I think they, they transitioned. They migrated to some other things, but I know they are banning traders when you get too much too much uh, payout from them. So actually, I don't uh, I don't use them anymore. Uh, Sakuri asks, "Do I trade gold?" No, actually, I don't. Uh, I am looking into this. I got introduced yesterday by. Uh, someone a good gold trader uh, actually i i don't like gold trades differently it, it just behaves differently and i think you can make a lot of money every pair like the indices also trade differently than uh, for example forex but i'm not uh like i don't risk my uh, my fund accounts on uh, on gold. I'm going to tip in the water very soon because like every day, every day people ask you in the stream, do you trade gold? What do you think about gold? I think gold's going only up because of uh, the war talks, like fundament for fundamental reason. Currently there is, like let me let me check gold right now. There is no discount array, I think, where we can trade up from higher time frame. Daily we're just consolidating. If it's weekly busy here and a high here, so I'm actually waiting for one or two to be taken out, then I can engage. But before that, like I cannot trade inside this uh, price action. Look at this, like I had no clue what to do there. And yeah, perhaps if you only trade turtle soups, like here, turtle soup boom, turtle soup down, then it could work for you. But uh, I need to spend more time at the chart before I can give you any cool uh, advice for that. Uh, TFM got C traded, but I heard that people exceed 15% payout. They behave. Yeah, but like, pro firms have one model, and that's just to make as, as not as many, but like to have the least payout as possible because that's that's a loss for them. So what you should do when trading pro firms is take sh small payouts, few K, and then leave. Take the money and go. Park somewhere else. I think in a few years we don't have any pro firms. It will be regulated. So take the uh, take the money while it is. That's why I'm grinding pro, pro firms right now. And if they got, all get regulated, which I have some sources, I think it's going to be sooner than you think. Then just want to play with own capital. Uh, we can discuss uh, the XY as well, like IS. The XY is going up on the one minute. Let's go to the chart. Yeah, so the XY is in between two arrays, between the daily volume balance and between the daily busy on a Friday. So I would leave for now. I will I would just leave it low. I, I think we're going to have lower dollar. I think we're going to trade it as low. That's why I'm, I'm inside a USD cap short right here. Uh, but based on DXY, DXY is just chilling around. So I don't think we're going to get much out of this uh, today. Perhaps we can get a big move at London Close in uh, 10 minutes, but uh, yeah, not 
not much to do over there. All right, I think I just got sued with my bias there. We have an SMT on the highs here, the lower the lower NQ. Uh, but I said like I already took a loss. I was way too fast inside the session, so that's that's my bad. So um, I'm not going to trade any. I'm going to take any trades before I see a higher time frame array being uh, being hit. And we have here with this one, or we can just trade to the lows. And I want to see on the five minute or 15 minute. Like for example, if this is going to displace down, get a black candle, then this candle becomes a bearish order block. And why does this candle become an order block? And now it's not an order block because price needs to displace downwards here. If you have a downward displacement here with the value gap, then you have order block plus your value gap, and then you can take a high probability short towards the lows, high above here, and go, just go down. And now you see it doesn't. It took that liquidity we marked out earlier. Like I said, we're leaving some liquidity here, and it took it. Uh, but this is, I'm just shitting for now here. So no order block. Uh, top step is good, futures only. Okay, yeah, I, I heard top step as well. I think ICT Sun is trading. When I was watching some or listening to some ICT podcast, I heard him talk about his son being on top step. Uh, Kai is ICT Unicorn. You mean the uh, for value gap and the order book entry with the unicorn? Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, Kirian says, I see everyone trading gold lady. Um, yeah, if someone is trending, something's trending, like trading up or trading down March, people like that because there's money to be made there and gold trended up for, I think, the last six months. So that's why people love gold. I think gold in general is a very good uh, thing to trade. But you, as any pair or any commodity, you should know how. Personally, I am not a gold uh, expert or expert. Like, uh, I don't know a lot about gold. I use a base framework that I'm teaching you guys with the uh, higher time for analysis and taking entries on the lower time frame with your entry models. Like, two puzzle pieces. First puzzle piece is higher time frame, higher time frame, highs, lows, or imbalances, internal range, external range. And then mark those out. And then inside to inside the week, go to lower time frames and see which one is going to be hit very likely. And when it's going to hit, do we get an entry setup? I like I like, for example, the school setup I shared with you guys. So we trade towards a daily high or low. And then you wait for a market structure shift to the other side and take it to the first one hour value gap you see. I think this model is trending very much because MXM Trader shared it on his, that's a big account, very good trader, like his teachings, very good. I learned the internal and external range liquidity, I learned that from him. So uh, if you are going to buy a course or have some spare cash, I'm not uh, affiliated in any way. So a uh, big disclaimer there, but uh, I learned like quite a lot from his his course. Like a few hundred bucks, and uh, it's like uh, I think three videos, or something. Yes, it's 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 cool. The concepts are very nice. Um, it's not many secrets like the thing I'm teaching you right now. That's basically his model. That's the one from T Trade. That's the one from Sniper. Sniper used, for example, uh, Med Labor used the SMTs much. SMTs at uh, intermediate term highs and lows. Also very good. And I try to use these concepts here with you guys. On the chart, not only one minute, <laughs> not only one minute, but uh, for example, the trade I took on USD CAD is uh, is one it, that's in my playbook. It's very high probability. Uh, where is it? 
Yeah, we're still chilling. This is high probability. Why? There's intermediate intermediate term high being set. Swing high here, swing high here. And we have clear sell side liquidity. Like external range liquidity has been taken. We have internal range liquidity waiting here. And inside that move from external to internal, we have a market maker sell model on the hourly. Like the like this is exactly what I trade. Like I look for this every day. So I don't care if I take a loss on this. Like if it rocks up, I'm fine. It's and in my journal is going to be this was a very nice trade. It didn't work out. Period. Next one. Um, Daniel De Costa asks, when you trade with Apex, what's the spread and commissions like compared to other traders? I think trade firms. Um, like I'm only trading one mini contract so i don't have much trouble with um, any spreads because it's very low lot size um when you're trading bigger of course that's a whole different story so i would know about the about spreads and, and, and commissions i uh, actually haven't looked at it because i'm trading so i'm only trading a 50k account there so i haven't and and yesterday live on stream i took the or no, two days ago, I took the first trade ever on Apex. So uh, I think, Daniel, I'm going to answer this question in maybe a week from, from now when I took more trades and, and analyzed them. In a weekend, I'm going back to my trades and just analyze them. Like, how were they? And how can I improve? As should you. Okay, we made SMTs on the highs and on the lows. So right now, I'm kind of flat for, uh, for now. Uh, German Ortiz asks, the silver bullet has two stages. What do you mean with the two stages? You mean in a market maker cell model? The second stage of distribution in a market maker cell model, uh, German Ortiz? So again, the second stage of distribution inside a market maker cell model is the silver bullet. Uh, Michael said, there is war going on right now that's affecting the world. Gold reacts quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When there's war, I think like the alternative things like gold, silver, oil, uh, Bitcoin, all those are moving up. Uh, and I think gold is going to trade up. Like gold, like that, that's maybe, I'm, I'm a little biased here, guys, but I think gold is also trading up because of lots of fundamentals. I know if that's true, but um, like you have, first of all, you have the war. You have inflation in all Western countries. What do you need to do to fight inflation you need to find a store of value that you can put the money in that doesn't depreciate so much so for example gold or bitcoin or silver or eggs or grain or whatever like something that doesn't depreciate as much as the uh, the euro the dollar like every currency on earth basically so for those two fundamental reasons gold has no way of going down fundamentally and the thing about fundamentals, like I am not a fundamental trader. Like I know this, and because I am a, such aware of gold, I won't short gold anytime soon. The only time I, I'm going to trade, um, I'm going to, to take a little short on gold is when it takes out the high, like the current all-time high, and then I see on the lower time frames the the school setup appearing. Because after a all-time high being taken a few weeks ago, or maybe last week, I don't know you always see a quick reaction down. So we can have a small market maker sell model uh, before going up again. And then, but for swings, for example, position trading, don't take shorts on gold, please. Don't, don't do it. And uh, if you do it and, be, and you are successful, like I'm very happy for you. But uh, yeah, that, that's my rant about gold, guys. So um, I think I'm going to get, get the question Monday again. What do you think about gold? And I'm going to say exactly the same thing. I'm, I'm going to short this high. For example, you're going to see this in a school group when it happens. Where's the high? Right here. So we trade to the high. High, 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 high. Around the high, I want to see the mark maker symbol to appear. And I'll be right here, shorting. Before that, I'm, I'm not shorting. Uh, 
Okay. Um, yeah, I took a loss for the guys who are new in the stream. I took a loss on uh, NQ shorting. I think it was it was here uh, somewhere. <laughs> I already forgot about the trade. Somewhere here. <laughs> somewhere I had to open. I took a short NQ, and uh, it was not a good one. I got taken out very very fast, and now we're just kind of messing around. Like we're, ma we're making SMTs on both highs and lows, so that makes it low probability by default. If you go to the little higher time frames, we have a daily city, or uh, excuse me, need to mark that a one hour city waiting here, and we already at some PD race we got respected. But like this is why I, I kind of fled. Like here, you have also this one with the Fed body though. Difficult, difficult se session. And that's why I don't like uh, trading the AM session when this happened. Like this is a outside of kill zone move, another another small one. It was a 300 pip move. And in London overnight, we had a 100, we had a, we had a 500 pip move down and a 400 pip move up. Before, before New York. So, do you think it's strange that we are just consolidating and perhaps we are going to have a search and destroy model right now? Take out the highs, take out the lows, take out the highs, take out the lows. Do you think it's it's strange? There's a video coming up in the um, twenty four mentorship talking about exactly this. Like, if we have a large moves due to political reasons, elections, big news events, or just outside kill zones movement, the kill zone after that is likely going to be lower probability than, uh, than usual. And that's what we're seeing right now. Uh, Kaya said, uh, but with Apex, you have to pay monthly. Uh, yeah, yeah, you need to pay monthly for, for Apex. For the, for the 50K account, uh, I paid the lifetime fee. I think monthly is 100 and one time is 160. Don't, don't pay me on this, but uh, I think of something like that. I paid the 160. And uh, they can have my money. And I hope I uh, get some nice pay, uh, pay paycheck from them. But I will just doing this consistently. So every day, together with you guys on the stream, we're going to watch New York Open, NQES, wait for higher time frame days to be hit, take that a school setup, or wait for the AMD. And if it doesn't come like this, you can take a loss or you can just not trade at all. And okay, cool. And we're going to wait for another day. And we're going to do that for like for a payout, you need to be uh, 10 days. So 10 trading days, not 10 days in a row, but so for at least, guys, for at least 10 streams in a row, we're going to uh, to use the Apex account. And then we can see after those 10 days if we are at that 2,500 pay uh, uh, the threshold so we can request a payout. And uh, you'll be live here, and I'll be doing exactly this. So I think if you're going to watch the 10th stream, you will think, okay, yeah, that is exactly the same as, as he did today. But that's the... That is how your trading should be. The same. Looking for the same setups all time after time after time. I just got an alert that we are taking a move on DXY. Yeah, we are going lower for DXY. And it means for my own trade, we're also going lower. Surprise, surprise, right? This is my highest probability setup. Playing out like exactly as you want it to be. So you see the market maker sell model. You see first distribution, and now the second distribution is beginning. It's the silver bullet, and today was the silver bullet. Like here, this one is London, London high. If you missed that, you got in here. Bodies are respecting the fifty percent, and now we're going lower. And first target is going to be this one, or this was the first target, of course, then this. Uh, but I think we're just going back to the uh, daily, daily busy. So we're going to take TP. 
needs to go like a lot of pips, I think like nine, uh, for like 70 pips down. So it's just like a huge move. I'm going to take it off after the stream because I cannot hold a trade overnight. So if it is here right now, for example, at the market close, I'm going to take the profit there um, and take the payout. It's on a live FTMO account. Uh, for the guys who were with me in the early Discord group, I know uh, Kai is this, I know Harshad is, I know some other guys, and let me see if you guys are here. Um, I had a, for a short time, I had a, uh, I had a Discord group with amazing traders, and all, and what we did, like recently, we all transferred towards the school group. And uh, if you see the leaderboards right now in the school group, most of the Discord guys are there. And what I did, I started with five FTMO challenges, 500k accounts, and I shared every trade with them, everyone. Like every loss, every win, every fuck up, every achievement. And um, so for you guys, for the Discord guys who are listening right now, this is on the uh, one of the two current funded accounts from those challenges. So from those five challenges past two. So I got to 100K from the challenge live. And this is probably, uh, when it reverses, it reverses, but like looking at the price right now, we are going to, the account is going to get its first payout. And you know what the drill is then, right? With the payouts. Reinvest, reinvest. Little percentage to private capital, or little to uh, to new challenges, and rinse and repeat. And the plan for this with the challenge, it was like the beginning of March. So we are six weeks later. And here comes the cool part, guys. All I did was trading exactly the concepts that you are finding in the 2024 mentorship. It's very easy. So I'm basically currently doing two types of trading. On the left, this this is like when I take big trades. So on a 100k FTMO funded, I'm doing these kind of trades on a one hour, 50 minute, like the higher time frames. On an Apex Futures 50k account, I'm going to be the degenerate, what you guys like, and just go to the one minute on NQ and sculpt the hell out of it. That's like a two, like two personalities of trading. I think with the first one, you can get you can make way more money, but it takes longer. But I will prefer it any day of the week. Uh, I cannot trade like FTMO on the Apex, also on Top Step or not on Elite Trader Funding. You cannot trade like that because you have that um, that uh, trading stop loss, the, the drawdown that's going up with your equity. So if you are you have a 5k drawdown, for example, max drawdown, and you're going. Uh, 5k in profits in your trade and you haven't taken the trade off but you're just in the trade then your daily or your total drawdown what was minus 5k is moving up even if you didn't take any profit so you are 5k profit in the trade your stop loss your max your max drawdown what was minus 5k has moved up to basically break even so when that trades go comes from 5k up to break even you're not break even, you're losing the account. And that's the tricky part about the trading stop loss. I think it's criminal, but hey, uh, it works uh, with, the, with the system. And the system I used is uh, the one that I shared in the 2024 mentorship with a, a trading trading stop loss, how you can trade your stop loss, of trade your stop loss. Um, just aggressive, very aggressive. Don't leave any money on the table. And if you uh, want to know the system, uh, watch the video. It's in the uh, in the school group. Um, Kai said, all week New York was trash for me, mostly consolidation. Yeah, yeah, New York. Um, like DX, why New York? Like USD pairs was very, very difficult. Holy shit. I agree. Uh, let, let's, let's take a look at uh, some of the... Uh, I have an indicator you've seen in the... In the uh, like this was kind of clean, not gonna lie. This was trash. This is trash. This was clean. So we had like of the five days or four days we had, like two were trash, two were clean. This was very clean, but most trades got stopped out by this one. For example, I I'm just doing U um, AU for now, but on the higher time frame, guys, it wasn't that hard. This for this counts for DXY as well. We started the week 
on Monday. This was the week on Monday. Then we said, okay, we have interrange range extra range liquidity. What do we need? Okay, first target probably going to be the daily BSC. No, not on Monday. So on Tuesday, perhaps low of the week inside the daily BC. And the cool part is after Monday, there was a daily CB created. So then you have your clear model from external range liquidity to internal range liquidity. What do we have? On Tuesday, we have a tap into the per value gap and we displace higher. So we don't continue. So next day you can expect price to go higher. This is in, this is literally the um, daily bias part one video, what I'm explaining right now. So take out the low here, also the daily busy, then we displace higher. So next day you can expect higher prices from external range liquidity to internal range liquidity. Boom. Wednesday. Yesterday. We had the school set up. We are inside a, uh, how do you say, it? the city? Excuse me. Take out the high. Here in this movement was the school set up. Well, now we have internal range. We could go to external range liquidity. So, what do we do right now? We don't know. So, based on this, we didn't take out the higher. Did GU did it? GU did. So, what do we have? We have an SMT on the daily with ES and GU. That means AU is probably going higher. So low hang fruit for EU is going to be this. You remember lower dollar, higher EU prices. So for next week, and you're going to see it in daily outlook as well. Early next week, I'm going to, if it maybe hits today already, but I'm going to look for uh, for higher uh, euro dollar and. We have this as well. And don't forget premium discount. So here is premium. So if this is the low, what could be, and we have a lower DXY coming up, could also be, we can trade until here. That is over 100 pips. So this was the, that was the game plan for, uh, for this week. Like I shared this on, uh, on a weekly outlook on Sunday, exactly this. We have low hanging fruit. We could probably going to make a new for value gap or we're going to trade it to this one. So you, you know, if you are here, go target the next array, external to internal. And if you want to avoid watching all the weekly outlooks, like every week, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make them as condensed, like as small as possible. Um, what I just told you is all I did, all I do. On the higher time frame. And then when that happens, go to lower time frame to hunt for the entry setups, like the school setup. Okay, okay. What do we have? What do we have? Let's remove this. So we went lower. We did went lower, guys. Like the, the short wasn't so bad. It wasn't so bad. Uh, but we take we took a loss there. That's okay. But here is the lower, yeah, SMTs again. Yeah. I think I'm not going to take another short um, today. Uh, Kai is, let me read the chat. Um, uh, this was a big trade for me and another quick scalp plus one minus. Okay, okay. One minus, one big, it's okay. I'm waiting for COT to make a full buy. Uh, the commitment trade report is um, is something I think is very important in your trading. I actually don't understand it. <laughs> so so but perhaps I should make a video about it to understand it myself. But uh, um, yeah, some good, very good traders once explained to me and I, I said, yes, yes, it's very cool. I understand, but I actually didn't understand it. Um, COT is basically uh, the commitment of traders. So you can like the the big the big money, the the hedge funds, and uh, I think I don't know what what the 
uh, what the uh, the range is, but like big money must disclose if they are long or short. So you have commercial, non-commercial traders, and they must disclose, for example, I am currently uh, long on Euro US, US dollar, or I'm short on the indices. They must disclose that. And that's the commitment of trade report. It's very nice to look it up. I think probably most of the big YouTube accounts like, like T-Trades or some else perhaps already have an, has a video about this. So perhaps this weekend you can watch it. Uh, but I think it's also important to uh, to mention guys like I make videos and there's lots of other guys that make videos and go watch them all and look at what sticks for you the most, like what, what works. Um, because there's so much great content out there. Like that's the reason I won't buy a course anytime soon because I know there's such a great value on YouTube already. Um, but yeah, uh, guys, I uh, sorry, I went, I went off track there. Um, I'm waiting for COT to make a full buy for next week. Amazing. Uh, if you would do that, that would be amazing. Um, if you make that analysis, can you share it in the school group? So not only I can learn from you with the COT, how you approach it, and maybe I can even make a video based on your system. Of course, from my own, own homework as well, but I would love to learn from you uh, to give like another confluence for the higher time frame uh, rate. Okay, okay. Uh, guys, just explain it in short. Uh, I think we need a call about this, uh, guys. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be good. We'll be good. That is something for for later. Um, Zachary said, your weekly outlooks helps very much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, very happy to do them as well uh, to help you guys out. Uh, Destiny said, I find myself more profitable trading indices over Forex. All right. If you are noticing that and you like the movement of the indices better, um, go focus on that. Go focus on that. I trade both. Uh, they move differently, just like gold and silver move differently. But yeah, if you if you, if you like that, go for it. A target is true day open. Uh, could be. What is the true day open? Uh, you mean the 17... Three six six seven. Uh, if it's going lower, it's going lower, lower. So taking out like we have here, right? Equal lows here. This is low hanging fruit for uh, NQ right now. Yeah, we are in a sell program. Yeah, so the play today was SFT on the highs and then short. So, yeah, sh the, the short bias was very correct. Um, but yeah, I was, uh, was around the open right here. I think this was a trade to, I should rewind it, but I think it was something like this. Like, I got stopped up at a big push upwards here. Maybe something like this. I was, I was very greedy here. So bias was correct, but uh, not something to write home about.
All right, there are some new people in the group as well. Just accept a few new people who did take the time to uh, to put in the work and uh, and explain the questions. Uh, let's take a look at the dollar. Like I think we are going to see lower DXY and we missed the trade. So we can look, for example, on something like this. As target, so with S and T's on the highs, then we can look at something like this for potential short. I actually don't like the price actually too much, but hey, uh, we are in the, in the stream, so who knows? Like that's a skill set I'm I need to develop as well. Like this is for my own journal. Um, when you are streaming, and I talk to some other streamers about this, when you have people watching you. That you have like like a, some kind of pressure to like um, not person entertain because I'm just talking, but like to do something. Like it's not very fun that you are watching someone stream and they just don't take a trade. It's very boring because you are here to see take someone take a trade or learn how they do it. Um, I think there's power in not trading at the stream, but I need to work on that uh, for myself. It's all it's all new for me. All new. Oh yeah, we were looking at dollar. Uh, I don't use a book map, um, Ortiz. Yeah, it's 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 um it's a very good technique to not deviate from the plan while everyone's watching. It is, it is like you totally I totally agree with that, but it's it's harder than you than while well, saying it than actually. Uh, The expires to these white things. I think we can take this low, and that's because I'm kind of biased with my uh, USD cat short. We are still trending lower. We still have some liquidity to take out. It would be nice to have it inside this session. Otherwise, uh, we will take the what is it, thirty pips, uh, forty pips. Fine. Uh, thank you guys, I appreciate it. Yes, yeah, so th this is like the warming up. Like now it's just boring streaming and we are with a few people here and perhaps in a, like, while doing this consistently in a few weeks, few months time, we are here with maybe hundreds. And like, this is like training, like um, sweat more in training so you bleed less in war. That is a quote from, I think it's Aurelius. <laughs> don't, don't get me wrong on this, but I think it's Aurelius, Mark Aurelius, Mark, Mark, but um, so this is like the trading, so streaming and trading at the same time, and when there is like a huge audience uh, coming up, then you are like, you're trained, you don't make the silly mistakes, you are not pressured by eyeballs. Um, Michael said, things why should take the low and gold should take the London high? I just got a message from someone. Um, he also mentioned that um, I should look for longs on gold. Hold on. Um, okay, uh, let's let's do a quick. Okay, uh, yeah, DXY is going lower. Uh, I think gold and DXY are inverse correlated. But the thing is, like NQ and DXY are also inverse correlated, but that doesn't happen as well many times. So. Okay, so I see we take out, where's liquidity? Wednesday low, Thursday low. Okay, we didn't take a Thursday low, but we did take out that um, news wick. So you see the time, it's uh, it's eight o'clock. That was when the, uh, between these two hours. So we took liquidity. Oh. Not very clean. Okay, we took liquidity. Let's see. Let's see. It's actually very clean. So what we did, we took liquidity here. Then we displaced upwards, leaving this first for value gap. Don't look at the wicks. The bodies tell a story. There's a ICT says that like wicks wicks do the damage, and um, bodies tell a story. 
So this five minutes failure gap, very much respected. Then here, we have an order block. Why? This liquidity got taken out, right? Short-term liquidity. Then it moved up. That means this candle is an order block. And next to that, we have an inversion for value gap. And with lots of this kind of rates that are respected. Low-hanging fruit could be this high. So um, let's see what we have right here. OK, I am willing to trade as a demo, of course. Little order block right here. 50% to order block. OK, one to two. This is what uh, something I would like to. Uh, so when it happens, give me a uh, leave me a heads up. I think this is low hanging fruit for uh, for gold. A premium right here. Uh, yeah, exactly. Asia low sweep. Uh, if you are you're completely right. That's the uh, the session sweep. Yeah, let's see. Okay, I'm going to do her value gap plus here. Okay, this is going to be the, the setup. And if this hits, guys, if this hits, I'm going to spend the whole weekend watching gold videos and trading. So next week, I'm going to uh, add this to the to the uh, war chest. Um, Daniel said, "I was by short today as we take the open." Uh, yeah, I fully agree with you, Daniel. Like I was, my bias was short too. But what I wanted to see. Uh, was a little high push. So uh, looking at the hourly, like let's remove this. We had basically on the hourly, we had a few for value gaps. We had this one, we had one here, we had one here. But if we are, if we have multiple value gaps, just like you know from the value gap video from the 2024 mentorship, you need to look at which for value gaps are in premium. This value gap and this value gap. So then was the question, okay, which value gap is going to hold? And at the open, we saw that this probably was the fair value gap that should hold. At the open, I was looking together with you guys at uh, this price action right here. And while pushing down, I was like, okay, perhaps we're not going up anymore. I wanted to see at the open this. Manipulation lag towards the highs, and then going going down. That was the end game. But I wanted to, uh, or vice versa, right? But the we are we have strong higher time frame bearish order flow. So you'll be like highest leverage should be short. Um, but then I thought, okay, I see displacement down, leaving a value gap. One tap, two taps. So I took the trade. I think around here, stop loss above here. This this value gap and the order block. But then this turtle soup came around and stopped me out and could have been a nice trade. But hey, this is this is part of the game. I was greedy here, too fast. Maybe I should have waited. And then I was too scared to enter again. So every trade looks very nice in hindsight. And we did have it, so it's cool. Um, the second value gap is also in a premium mark. Hold on. Um, the chat is going. Yeah, Daniel. Okay, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Um, but I think I was a little off with my bias on this stream. So um, yeah, like I got turtle soup. <laughs> I got turtle soup, and that's okay. Screenshot in the journal, and uh, next week uh, we have uh, new changes for uh, for this. Okay. Let's go back to the chat. Um, use, the, use the cat is dropping. I could not get an entry. I was waiting for a London high sweep. Okay, let's go back to uh, to use the cat. Uh, yes, now taking that that swing low here. So we could see. Where are we? It's already ten. What we could see, I think, is if we're going to continue this, we could also let this wait for Monday. But like. 
that to get something, or is it after this candle is closed, there's a new candle being created. I think it's going to be lower as well. Then there's a value gap created. And we can take a trade line. I think this is going to happen for a uh, new candle, a value gap created, then going lower. And for, let's, let's analyze that London sweep you were talking about, uh, VR. What's your name, by the way, VR? If you want to stay anonymous, also fine. Um, why I didn't expect a London sweep? Like, you mean sweep is above this high? This has to do with um, you have long term lows, you have intermediate term lows, and you have short term lows. And currently, I'm looking with you at a intermediate term low. An intermediate term low. It, um, before I'm going to explain this, do you know that 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 uh, game on your mobile phone? It's called um, Twenty Forty Eight. If you, if you don't know it, look it up. I think you played as a kid. Like you start with a a few tiles and then you, you need to merge them and if you merge uh, two tiles that both have the number one it becomes two and then you if when you have two tiles that are two then you come to four and you can play the game like let, let me know if you know the game or <laughs> someone knows the game uh, vr um so um the same works with short-term highs in intermediate term high so for example here the short-term high i'll make this and I can create a video about this as well if you guys if you guys want that. So this is a short term high. We, we are talking about if I'm talking about a, a high, I'm always talking about a swing high, and a swing high is a lower high, lower high to the left, right, and to the left. So short term high here. If you don't see this yet. Like we are here. This was um, it was uh, start today, start London. This was what I was looking at. So I was marking this out, short term high, short term high, and when there's an a, another short term high being created, it's lower than this short term high. So these are low. When you have a short term high on the left and the right from you, this high. It's up upgraded just like this video game from a short term high to an intermediate term high. So, again, you didn't know that before. And then of course, in hindsight, everything is easy. But you should expect when a lower high forms here, that is a swing low or swing high, excuse me, like, like it did here. Here it became, or maybe the next candle, here it became a swing high lower high to the left, lower high to the right. And then this became an intermediate term high. Screenshot this, guys. This is very, and the thing about an intermediate term high is, this one is very hard to break. And now comes the uh, the explanation of VR. It's a long story, my bad, but um, why there was no London high sweep? Because the London high was already a short term high with an immediate term high Aside from it, so it didn't make sense if we made another high. Because then we had possibly something like this. Oh. Like this. And this doesn't happen. Okay, short term high, intermediate term high, short term high. This is short term high. This is this is short term high, and it only becomes an intermediate term high if there's a lower short term high to the right and left to it. All right. Okay, let's. I want my setup back. Yeah, there we go. And this this is on the stream as well, so maybe uh, uh, record this or anything. At the London high is the last green candle. On the uh, on the one hour chart, but do you? By the way, do you mean with London? You mean you mean this one, the two hour candle, or you mean? But it is outside of London. It's already six. So the reason I trusted this setup was we were respecting the bearish value gaps, the cities, and also what do we have here? Here we have 
one, two, three up close candles that take out liquidity. What is it? It is a high probability order block. So we have a higher, we have a high probability order block inside the 50% of a value gap. That is, uh, yeah, and then uh, Kai has already mentioned, is a, a unicorn setup. That's a high probability setup. So you shouldn't expect uh, a long sweep seeing that. Um, can I show you my chart? Uh, Zachary asked that. Um, Zachary, can you share your chart inside the school group? Uh, then the question is about the for value gaps. Then we go back to the to AQ. And you said like, if you have two for value gaps, when which one do you need to enter in? And I think you guys meant like all these for value gaps. You have one here. You have one here. I'm going to remove them from now. But if you're not sure which for value gap to enter in, use premium and discount. So let's draw swing high. To swing low, which of gaps are in premium? And I think one smart one said there is the other one is also in the premium. Yes, a part is in the premium. Like this part of the value gap is a premium. This in premium. And this in premium. So which one should you enter? If you're shorting inside the premium of the range, if you're longing inside the discount of the range. Any other questions, guys? So the bias was good. Execution was was very bad. I hope you guys, I hope to see you, some of you guys inside the, uh, the TP Titans because uh, I think some of you took this turtle soup. I know you guys did. Let's take a look at the gold uh, gold trade. Oh, we are not tapped in. We are not in. We are not in. Yeah. Can happen, but th th this will be a very clean setup one to two. So we didn't get tagged in. Like this is like, how many pips? It was one full point, so it's not very, very good. So bad execution again. What we could see, these are failure swings for now. Oh no, <laughs> they're not anymore. So it could be nice if we could create failure swings, go back to the entry and then shoot up. But nope. USD cat took the low and now is going up. Let's look at the time. It is London close at a Friday. I'm going to take this position off right here, guys. So this this trade is not. It is became right here. I took I took it off right here, and to get so one to yeah one to six another great RR. And why did I do this? It's a premature move. So it could it could be that I am a little a person greedy, but I just want to take a profit. One, we took out Monday's low and displaced upwards. So you know what I want to see then is taking out the high and then move back to the first one hour array. So we'll set up. And the other reason I don't want to hold. Or I cannot hold is because of FTMO rules. On an FTMO funded account, you cannot hold trades overnight, so you need to close them before markets closed. And it's the it's a payout. So um, I think this is going to be a 2k payout, something like that. So you can buy more challenges and 
So uh, yeah, there's a payout coming up. This is very cool. And if this trade's going down even more, then okay, then uh, then it sucks. Or not sucks, but there's there was money left on the table, and uh, and this is just going to be my journal. So I'm going to screenshot this for the journal. And the original idea was here. So perhaps next week uh, we can uh, re-enter. Perhaps we can get on Monday, we can have this move. Because this can become, you guys know it, an order block. Why is it an order block? Because these up close candles trade into your, your value gap here. So this could be a setup for, for Monday. Um, is unicorn a breaker? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think the I see unicorn is a breaker inside for value gap. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I should check that. Uh, I like to use for value gap and order book as entry. I like them more. Uh, but yeah, breaker and is of course very good, very good. And a order block and a breaker are kind of the same if you're going to switch time frames. So in the higher time frame, if you compare to the lower time frame, a break in order can be the same, same areas. All right, no school set up yet. Going to take the lows here. Go back to NQ. NQ is approaching. NQ is uh, doing its thing. All right, guys. Um, I think this is going to close the week. So uh, interesting week. Had some wins, had some losses. Uh, we are in profit. Going to share the results in the school group. We got um, uh, we got a payout. Payout on Friday. Very nice. We have a new 50k Apex funding. Uh, took already some losses as well. We took a Euro, took a Euro GPY loss. Um, I want to emphasize that everyone loses. Uh, Billy, can we reanalyze gold again? Yeah, sure. I'm going to do a quick one for you. Um, Kieran asks, what happens if you just held it? Does FTMO close? Yeah, I think FTMO closes for you and you get one warning. And after they can just say, yo, you're breaching rules, so we take your funding back. I think that's that's uh, that's true. Uh, okay, let's go to gold. Like again, I don't trade gold. So, uh, but for now, uh, what I saw, we took out Asia low here. We had a mark stock shift upwards. The bodies were respecting the fair value gap here. We had a move upwards. Here we have an order block. And then we were around here. And then I said, okay, I'm going to short around here. We missed it by a few pips or long here, going to miss it a few pips and then uh, to the upside. But like, I don't trade gold. Perhaps I'm going to do it soon, but I'm better trading forex indices because I just spent more time there. I never say you cannot make money in a certain area because you can make money everywhere. I think if someone says to you, you cannot, he's lying or just, doesn't know anything. All right, all right. Uh, yeah, so uh, let's finish the stream here. Uh, well, you you DJs, you need to go go back to your caves for two days. Mark's going to close and um, try to focus on basically two things. One is find a life outside the charts. So, so do something you like to do. Go, go, do walk in nature. Go to the gym, whatever. Go read a book. Uh, but secondly, go, uh, go journal. Go refill all, 
preview all your charts, go look at the lessons you can take out of the trades, both good and bad, and what you did very well and what you want to continue doing next week. I'll be, I'll be doing that as well. And on Sunday, there will be a weekly outlook. And from Monday, 9 a.m., you're back here at the charts. So uh, thanks, guys, for, uh, for tuning in. It was a nice, uh, nice stream again. And a happy weekend. And going to close the YouTube stream right now. And after that, 